in Slotty Crank Part 1, I reviewed the, the uh, horizontal case, which simply meant that the velocity of the slider here was just VQX, and we have a constraint that it can move up and down, so VQY equals zero. And similarly for the acceleration. The acceleration of the slider was just the AQX component from our kinematics table of a double pendulum, and the constraint was simply AQY equals zero. When we went to this vertical case where the slider or the piston can move vertically, we would say that the, um, the velocity of the slider is VQI, the constraint is VQ, VQX equals zero, and similarly, the acceleration of the slider is the AQY component, and the constraint was AQX equals zero. So now we're ready for this general case here. And the general case basically says, um, rather, rather than writing different sets of equation, can we just write a set of equations for a, a slider crank no matter what position the slider is in and just let the computer do the math. So in this case right here where I drew, I drew the slider on an angle, right, we know that when beta is zero, that was our horizontal case from before, and we know that beta equals 90 degrees, that was our vertical case. So what about this general case? So what do we know about the slider? We know it moves in the direction of this ramp. So if I can define a univector, which hopefully in class you're getting good at, if I can define this univector, and let's say I call it E1, and then I have one that's perpendicular to it, and that's E2. All right, let me move again my screen around, E2. If I can define those two, this is how simple it becomes. That the velocity of the slider is equal to VQ, that total velocity of Q, from my kinematics table of a, of, of a double pendulum, dotted with the univector E1, so back to dot products. And then my constraint is simply VQ dotted with E2, because it can move perpendicular, equal to zero. And if you need the acceleration of the slider, the piston, whatever you want to call it, very simply, acceleration of the slider is equal to AQ, right, that whole mess, from before, dotted with E1, and my constraint would be what? Acceleration of Q, the vector, dotted with E2 is equal to zero. So remember from the videos before Right there is our velocity of Q. There's our acceleration of Q. Hopefully, we remember from math dot products. If not, you can review that. So all I need to do is uh, figure out what my E1 is. So I'm going to use what we use in class for corner transformations uh, to remind myself. So if I is to the right, my x-axis, right, and J is up, and E1 is here. This is my angle beta. Doesn't look like a beta, does it? Not to me. Here's my E2. Let me, let me blow this up. It'll be a little bit easier for me. Maybe for you, maybe not. But for me, definitely. So here's my beta. Therefore, this is beta. And I'll write it... Um, now, so if I want to resolve E1 into its Cartesian components, if you think back to statics, as I clean this up a little bit because it's as messy as anything. There we go. There's my E1. How long is the univector? The length of it is one, and it has no units. So it's not one inch, one anything, it's just one. 
So if I project this down, I have two components. I have this component here and this component here. Or if I prefer to think of it as this component here and this component here. So this side here would be one cosine beta. This vertical would be one sine beta. So E1 is cosine beta, right, because 1 times cosine beta, I, plus sine beta J, no units. E2, what is, what is, I'm laughing with the computer problems. What is E2? Let's see if I can grab a different color here. E2 is this component here plus this component or this component, however I want to look at it. So this side here is my is my um, well actually let me backtrack. If I want to use beta, I probably would take this piece here just to keep my angles the same. Otherwise I have to use 90 minus beta. So if I take this piece right here, this is sine of beta and it's going to the left so it's minus and this is my cosine here. So let's try it again. So E2, my univector, because the length is 1, we know that, is equal to minus sine beta in the i plus cosine beta in the j. So now all I need to do is simply do my dot products. If you remember what I dotted with i is 1, i dotted with j or k is 0, right? And similarly, j dotted with j is 1, j dotted with anything else is 0, and so on and so forth. So what does this look like in the most general case? Well, let's see if I can get them on the screen so I can actually see this. Okay, let me make some room here. So I have room to work. And what I'm going to do is actually go through the math, at least since this is a review, get away from that dead spot because I can't erase anything. I need that part of my screen. And I think we are good to go. So what am I trying to do here? If I look at my velocity, my velocity of the slider, we said on the right is VQ dotted with E1. So what is VQ? So if I dot it with something, I just multiply the I components. I'm getting a scalar as a result. So that's equal to my x component minus r1 theta dot sine theta minus r2 phi dot sine phi times, where's my e1? My e1 is down here. The I component is cosine beta. Come back up. Now I have my, my VQI component here. So plus R1 theta dot cosine theta plus R2 phi dot cosine phi and it dotted with the J component. The J component is right here. Sine of beta. That's it. Let me make some more room here. Move away from the dead zone here. I have to put some stuff back. And we'll do the constraint. Okay. So I have a general constraint. And as you see on the right, my constraint is VQ vector dotted with univector E2 equals zero. So my VQ is what? I can see right above me, it's going to be my minus one theta dot sine theta minus r2 move up into the good spot phi dot sine phi and it's dotted with e2 that's my i component my e2 is minus sine beta times minus sine beta take my next component right my vqi r1 
theta dot cosine theta plus r2 phi dot cosine phi. Okay, that's my j component, so it's times the j component. Cosine beta, and that's equal to zero. So here is my constraint equation. Make that look a little more like a one. And this here is the velocity of my slider. Okay, so let's do a quick review from the past. Make a little room here. So we want to be able to solve this. And so what do we have for variables? So, just like before, sorry, take a little bit too reach here. So I'm going to switch to black. Yeah, I'll stay blue. So, what do we have? If I look at my two equations, I have R1, I have an R2, I have a theta, I have a phi, I have a theta dot, I have a phi dot, I have a velocity of the slider. And I have a beta. If I care about the acceleration, I also pick up a theta double dot term. I didn't bother writing it, but the same thing for acceleration of the slider would be a q dot over d1 and constrained to write a q dot over d2 equals zero. And I would pick up a theta double dot, a phi double dot, and acceleration of the slider. So if I start with my two equations I have on the left, if I assume I have my slider in front of me, Right, in some position that I can measure it, I know my length R1, again, that's between the pins, R2 is between the pins, not the overall length. I need to know the angle in one position, so I know my theta and phi. If I know the incline, that's constant, right, I know that as well. So I have two equations and two unknowns, I just need to know one thing. So let's say I'm given this. I can solve for these two, or if I'm given the velocity of the slider. If I now need the acceleration, I already have my two velocity equations for my two acceleration equations. Um, since I picked up the acceleration of the slider equals something and another constraint, I have two equations. I can handle two unknowns. I only need to know one thing. Typically, if I'm given the crank angular velocity, I'm typically given the crank angular acceleration, and I solve for these two. Or maybe I'm giving the velocity of the slider a piston, and I'm giving the acceleration of the slider a piston, and I solve for the other two. So in that case, I'd have four equations and four unknowns. So this is the most general case that we would typically use, so we don't need to worry about special cases. We write just these equations, and we're good for every slider crank.